going to teach you guys today about route stationing. Okay. So, <clears throat> route stationing is also, that's what surveyors call it. Okay. Uh, I keep wanting to sit on that table, but I'm afraid I'm too fat and it will collapse. <laughs> so, let me pull a chair over here. So, route stationing is what surveyors call it. Okay, GIS people call it linear referencing usually. It's the same thing. Okay, two names for the same thing. And what it lets you do is it lets you measure location along a route, a linear route, okay, or a linear feature. Okay, so the reason we deal with it in, in surveying a lot is because it's used frequently in construction. Okay, because we build a lot of linear things. Okay, so what are some examples of linear things that we build? That we build? Yeah, that we build. Roads, canals, Bridge. bridges, water lines, gas lines, sewer lines. Those are all linear features. Okay. So it's, it's frequently helpful to measure your location along some linear feature. And we, we, we use stationing to do that. Okay. So you guys see this every day, you just may not realize it. So anytime you're on a state highway, you will see every mile there is a post with a number on it. That's where the word mile post comes from. There's literally mile posts on the highway. Okay, the number on the mile post is the distance in miles from wherever they start to count from what we call the zero station. Okay. And so, you guys may not know this, but when you're in emergency services like search and rescue or a fire, if you're a firefighter or you're an ambulance, people will call in the scenes of accidents based on the nearest mile post. Okay, so a half a mile past mile post 13. Okay, don't quote me on this, but I also believe the freeway exit numbers in California are based on mile posts. So exit 76 is 76 miles from where they started counting zero. Okay, exit 85 is 85 miles. Okay, so that's all route stationing. Okay, now you guys don't see a lot of that here because we don't do a lot of construction staking. Okay, but you have to know how it works as a surveyor. You just have to. It's one of those things you got to know, right? And you definitely have to know it to pass your tests, your CST or your LSAT. Okay. Now, we do occasionally, even as boundary surveyors, we do occasionally have to know how to work with stationing because we will get things like highway maps, highway right-of-way right maps or other kinds of right-of-way maps that are, that are going to have information based on station. So, we do occasionally do that. So, we just, those, we just, those, the jobs we just had, in, in Stockton and Lodi, we're along Highway 99 and we had to look at right of way maps and there was stationing on there. Okay. All right, any questions so far? Make sense? Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of stationing. But here's what you got to be able to do. You might want to write this down. So you got to be able to do two or three basic operations. You got to be able to convert coordinates to stations. Okay, so if I give you a coordinate, you got to be able to calculate a station from it. If I give you what's called an alignment, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, you got to be able to convert stations back into coordinates. So if I give you a station along an alignment, you got to be able to calculate me a coordinate. Okay, and then you have to be able to calculate distances between stations. Those are basically the three things you got to be able to do. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very simple example of stationing. Okay, and then we'll slowly get, I'll, I'll introduce some things that are going to make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, so stationing is based on what we call an alignment, okay? And, al and an alignment is the geometry that makes up the linear feature, okay? So if we want to define that, an alignment 
Okay, alignment, that's a key term. That's the ge geometry that makes up the linear feature. Okay. In all the examples we're, we're going to work today, it's just straight line segments. So you can just think about an alignment like a polyline in AutoCAD or Brick's CAD. Okay. Now, most alignments have curves, horizontal curves. Okay. We're not even going to do that today. We'll do a, next next triple F. We'll do a whole hour just on horizontal curves. Okay. So the alignments we're working with today don't have any curves. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> a station. Is just a position along an alignment. Okay. Okay, and I want you to remember the station is the distance along the alignment from the start point. Distance from start point. Okay. Now in GIS, in a GIS system, they sometimes call the station the M value. M as in Landon is magnificent M. Okay? And the M stands for measure. Measure of how far you are along the line. Okay? But surveyors call it stationing. GIS people will call it sometimes call it the M value. Okay now, stationing can be in any kind of linear unit. It could be in miles, it could be in feet, it could be in meters. Okay? But typically, if you're looking at a set of construction plans, your stationing will be in feet okay. in the United States. Okay, so we write stationing in a special way. Okay. So it's always got a plus. So this is, the way you read this is, this is station 32 plus 0, 0, 0.26. Okay, this part right here is called the whole station. Okay, this is the fractional station or the part of the station. Okay, but that's how you read it 32 plus 0, 0, 0.26. Okay. Now, just to teach you some survey lingo, if it doesn't have a decimal part, Surveyors will call this 32 plus a pair, plus a pair, okay? If you get an old crotchety guy, he might say 32 plus balls, okay? 32 plus a pair, a pair of zeros, okay? That's what the station is. I was wondering if you are going to bring up that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, I'm going to come back. We also, have, we also have what's called station offsets. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Come back to that in a few minutes. Don't worry about it for now, okay? But this is how you read stationing. Now, I want you guys to realize what this means is if this is in feet, this is 3,200.26 feet from the start, okay? So if you want to know how far it is as a number, just get rid of the plus, okay? All right. Now, if this stationing is in miles, how far is this from the start? Thirty-two hundred miles, not feet. See that? So you got to know what unit system you're in. We're usually in feet. All right. So I drew you guys a sample alignment. This could be an example of an alignment for a water line. Okay. By the way, alignment. When you're dealing with stationing, alignment means horizontal. Profile means vertical. We're not talking about profiles today. Just talking about horizontal. Okay. All right. So. The start of our water line right here is at zero plus zero zero. Now, you don't have to start at zero. In fact, a lot of times people will start at like 10 plus a pair because they don't want negative numbers. It's the same reason why we do 5,000, 10,000, not zero, zero. Okay? But in this example, I started at zero. Okay? <clears throat> then I go north 90 degrees east to station one plus 50. Then I go north 45 degrees east to station one plus 75. Then I go north 90 degrees east to station two plus 10. Okay. And I give you the northing and easting of my start point. That's all the information you need on an alignment to calculate coordinates and stations. Okay. So we're going to work through the example. 
Okay, so let's do the easy stuff first. I'm going to get a different color here, orange. Okay, let's just figure out what the length is of each segment. Remember we talked about that? You've got to be able to do that. Take two stations and come up with the length along the alignment. So how far is, how long is this first segment? Okay, go ahead. What'd you say? How far is it? From here to here. Is it 150 or 150, yeah. 150 feet. Does everybody see how Austin came up with that? Yeah. Zero to one plus 50 is 150 feet. So the next one's 25. Next one's 25 feet. Okay, last one. 35 feet. You see how we got that, Angelo? Yeah. Okay, if you're doing it in your calculator, you just take 210 minus 175. Okay. All right, now, do you guys understand now that we have these bearings and these distances, we can draw that in CAD, right? Okay, if you draw it in CAD, that means you can do the, you can do the coordinate geometry in your calculator too, if you had to. Okay. And we know where it's at in space because we have this coordinate here. Okay. So let's just, I, I set this up so we don't have to do any trig. Let's calculate the coordinates for these other three points on our alignment just using the information we have here. Okay. So this is pretty easy. I set this up on purpose so the math would be easy. Okay. So we want the northing and easing, easting for station 1 plus 50. So Angelo, what's our northing going to be? From where to where? I want the northing here. Uh, 25. Okay. Let me ask you this question. What's the change in northing? If this bearing is north 90 degrees east, Angelo, what's the change in northing from here to here? Southwest? No. Elena, help him out. It's nothing. There's no change in northing because our line is due east. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, due east. So if there's no change in northing, then what's our northing? 5,000. 5,000. Does that make sense, Angelo? If you're going to draw this line in CAD straight across, does your northing change? No. No, it doesn't change. Okay. All right, Austin, what's our easting? For this... Station. Uh, 1,000. Nope. The oh, easting's going up. Our chain, what's our, yeah, our easting's going up. We're moving east. So you add the, say, B. So 1,150. You guys, does that make sense? Yeah. To everybody? Mm -hmm. Angela's what like, I need to go. <laughs> so, so, so Landon. So basically what you're doing, because it's it's going east, yep. and so the northing is going to change to not going up or down, and so you're basically just adding... That distance to yeah, the east. distance, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll remember, I'm going to work this example in CAD. I'm going to draw it in CAD. I'll do a video, and every time I draw a segment, I'll click on the coordinates so you guys can see how the coordinates change. So, That'll help you. Okay. What, what did you put on the board for the northing and easting? The, so the changes? It's uh so the change in easting, the change in northing for the first segment, Michaela, is zero. Okay, because it's because it's north ninety degrees east. Okay. The change in easting is hundred and fifty because the line is due east. Okay. I thought I heard five thousand, so I was like, what? Yeah, yeah no, it's five thousand and eleven fifty are the two coordinates. Okay. 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 Alright. So now this gets complicated because if I rotate this ten degrees. All of a sudden, you can't do easy math anymore. You gotta actually get your calculator out and do some trig, right? Like, we're not even there yet. Okay, we're, I'm just trying to teach you guys to crawl. All right, now, let's figure out what this next coordinate is up here. So, 1 plus 75. Okay, 1 plus 50. So, you could do this as a table, right? Okay, so this was 5,000, 1150. Okay. Okay, so let's, before we do the coordinate, let's just figure out what's our change in northing and our change in easting. By the way, surveyors write that as a triangle. Change in northing, change in easting. Some people might also call it delta, delta northing, delta easting. Okay, so at a 45 degree angle, the sides of our triangle are equal. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to take the square root of 
Am I doing that right? Is it the square root of 25? It's a squared plus b squared. Yeah, it's a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Brian's on my phone. Um, I tell you what. Yeah. Who's got a count? You got that? Yeah. Are you going to do it for us? So we're trying to find. I want to know what this distance is. I want to know what a squared or b squared is. So it's. Uh, oh, it's trig, then it's. Uh, no, 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 no. It's the. It's. Uh, you're going to take. A squared equals C squared minus B squared. So take um, 25 times 25. Mm -hmm. 625. Oh, hold on a second. We don't, I, I don't have the other sides of the you triangle. Have to do, you have to do sine. Yeah, you got to do trig, you're right, I'm sorry. I've never taken a day during my life. So it's that sine 90 times 25? Because it's a size of even, isn't it? Even no, it's the um, sine of 45 so. times 25. I mean 21.27. That sounds right. Okay, so 21.27. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for doing that. I'm sorry, I, I thought I had set this up to not need trig, but I goofed. Okay, so. Okay, so our change in easting here is 21.27. Our change in northing is the same number because this is a 45 degree angle here, right? These angles are 45. Okay, so what's my easting at this station? Oh, sorry, what's my northing at this station? 5,025. No, not 25. Change in northing is smaller than 25, right? You see how we got that, Angelo? Okay. What's our easting? 1171. 1171. 72, sorry. Point, oh, sorry. 1172. No, you were right, 71.27. Oh, yeah. Because you added the change in northing and change in easting. Yeah, no, I was Okay. All right. We're gonna see if we're gonna see if Angelo's got his brain working. Okay, now we're coming down here. What's our northing down here, Angelo? So I'm adding ninety to five thousand. Okay, no, hold on. So this is the bearing, buddy. North ninety east. How much does the northing change if you're going due east? Okay, so is this northing the same as this northing? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes it is. Five zero two one two seven. Okay, now our easting. We're going east. So what's happening to our easting? We need to add thirty-five. It's getting bigger. We got to add thirty-five feet to come up with our easting. You see that? Okay, so I can't do that math. What is it? One two six. One one two zero six point two seven. Eleven seventy one point two seven plus thirty five. Yeah. It's eleven seventy four point two seven. Oh wait, no, I put I did not. Yeah. Eleven seventy one point two seven plus thirty five feet. Twelve oh six point two seven. Okay. All right, so here's what I want you guys to remember. You guys are spoiled. If I gave you these, if I gave you these stations and these bearings, you could go draw this in CAD. I don't, I don't doubt it for a minute. Okay, you guys could do that. And then you could click on the end of, you could put a point here and click on it and get the coordinate. Okay, but you guys have to be able to do that math without CAD. Especially when it's this easy. You, you know, we, we worked one trig problem here. Okay, so you guys got to be able to do this, right? Okay, but that's how stationing works. So the very first thing you do, if you're trying to solve a problem like this, the very first thing you do, I want you to do just like we did. Take your stationing and figure out what your distances are along your alignment, okay? And then you can start doing your math to calculate your coordinates, okay? So we taught you two operations. We taught you how to take two stations and get the distance along the alignment. And then we taught you how to take a coordinate I'm sorry, we taught you how to take a station and turn it back into a coordinate, right?
Okay, now let's do another example. Let's go the other way. So now I'm going to give you a coordinate and we're going to turn it into a station. Okay, so if I tell you I want to stake a manhole, or this is a water line, so I tell you I want to stake a water valve at 5,200. Oh, I better make sure my math works. How about 5,000, uh, 5,000, 1,000. 20. Okay, so look at the northing first. I'm somewhere on this line right here, right? Okay, then look at the easting. How far am I from the start point? 20 feet. You see that? Change in easting 20 feet. So I come down here 20 feet. Okay, so if my station is 0 plus 0, 0 here, and I move east 20 feet here, what's my station? 0 plus 20. 0 plus 20. What's this distance? 20 feet. Okay. So there you go. We just turned a coordinate into a station. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so my northing... 5,000 and my easting is 1045. What's my station? 0 plus 45. 0 plus 45. Okay. Alright. Okay, now let's talk about offsets. So we're going to make things slightly more complicated. So you can describe locations left or right of the alignment. Okay. Now, how do you define left or right? Left or right changes depending on the direction of the alignment. Okay. Direction goes up station, what we call up station. So as the station increases, that's the direction you're moving in. Okay. So you always point towards the highest station. So if I'm standing on the line, left, right. Okay, so if I'm standing at the marker board here, is left at the top of the board or the bottom of the board for this alignment? No, wrong. Which way is up? Which, which way is up station? This way. So that's the way I'm facing. I'm facing up station. Left is at the top or the bottom of the board? You guys are killing me. Come stand right here. Stand right here at the dot. Okay, hey, you're looking up station. That's the, top. That's, the, that's the top of the board. This is the top of the board. Oh, yeah. Which way is left? For me? For the station, for the alignment. Which way is left? That's the top of the board. Yes. Okay, if you're standing, if you're standing, stand right here. Raise your left hand. All right. So if we're facing up station, which way is left? That way. Yes. Which way is right? Raise your. Put your left hand down. Raise your right hand. Right. Okay. Before we get to your question, you need a point yeah. to trick question. No, you guys are killing me. All right. Okay. So this is this over here is the left side of the alignment. Right. This over here is the right side of the alignment. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna warp your brains. You ready? If I change this and I made this zero and this two ten, that flops. Okay. So it's important though, because you can really you will put manholes in the wrong place if you get left and right mixed up. Okay. All right. So here's how offsets work. If I give you a station now and I say I'm at station one plus twenty minus thirty point five. Okay, this is the station, this is the offset. Negative offsets are left, positive offsets are right, always. Okay, now you could write this, instead of writing it minus 35, you might see it written like this, 30.5, left, 30.5. Okay, so what you do is you come down here, everybody agrees that's about 1 plus 40, right? Okay, so... Come up here, Angelo. Put Angelo on the spot since I made Austin raise his left hand. 
Okay, draw me a dot where you think left 30.5 is. 30.5? Yeah. Well, this is 50, so... Yeah, so it's like 30. Okay. You flunked. Go, go sit down. You, you, this is a good try, though. You're a good sport. All right, come on, Jason. You, you don't know? All right, come on, Elena. Do you know? Let's see if Elena can figure it out. <laughs> draw me a dot at, at that station and offset. Too bad Michaela's not here. I know she could draw the dot in the right spot. This is around 20, and then 35 would be somewhere right here. Okay. Austin, do you want to try? I'm no, everybody's lost. Okay. 20. 30 would be can you repeat? Can you repeat what you... Come on, you cowards. Everybody get up there and draw a dot. Brian, Brian, where do you want me to draw my dot? Tell me where to go. I can't see it very well. What well, station do we want? We want 1 plus 20 left 30.5. All right, so let's go up. Uh, let's go up to station 1 plus 20. I can't see. Okay, can't so, see all right, you're right. Okay, so I'm moving up the alignment to 1 plus 20. I thought that was 1 plus 40. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah you, that you, right. did, you did assign that earlier. All right, sorry. 1 plus 20. All right. All right, now. It, it, the be, as best as your eyeball can scale it, go left of alignment, in other words, up on the board, 30 and a half feet. Well, that's where I meant to put my dot, because oh. I thought that was one plus right. 20. Okay, so she might have had it right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if it was right, if it was a if it was a plus, if it was right, it'd be down it's here. On the bottom. Left or right of the alignment. So here's the trick. Find your station first and then go left or right, whatever that distance is. Okay, so what I want you guys to understand is if I draw a box around our alignment, is there any location in this box that we can't describe with a station offset? No, everything, okay, so what, what an alignment allows you to do, what stationing or linear referencing allows you to do is relate any position in an area to an alignment. You do that with a station and an offset. Okay, so that's how offsets work, left or right. You can't get this flipped. You'll put concrete in the wrong spot. Okay. All right. We're not even going to talk about curves. Okay. So, what I will do, because I think it'll help you guys, is I will record a video, and I will put this exact alignment into CAD. And as I draw it, I'll click on the points so you guys can see the northings and eastings change. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm not even going to wait a month because you guys will forget. Next week, we're going to take an hour and I'm going to have a simple problem like this. We're going to have you guys work some, we're having you work eight problems. Okay, with no trig. We'll set it up so everything's cardinal direction. Okay, once you guys can handle that, then I'm going to put a 15 degree skew on everything and make you guys use your trig. Okay, but I know we need to practice right triangle trig before we get to that. So, all right. But at least now you guys can look at a set of plans and be able to figure out, if you see station, you'll know what it looks like, right? You're gonna see pluses all over the place. All right, Brian, did you wanna add anything? No, I think you've confused everybody. Else. All right, <laughs> all right. Okay, this is hard, it is, it's hard. If it was easy, would they pay us to do it? No, they wouldn't pay us to do it if it was easy, right? It is. It's hard, okay? But you guys can figure it out. I don't I don't have a doubt in my mind. Now, here's why you guys like look, when I was in college, like I got thrown stationing with no explanation whatsoever, and I just had to figure it out, right? So like you guys are better off than that.